morning. And welcome to Old South Church here in Farmington, Maine. We are pleased to have you with us, either in person or joining us um, through Facebook Live. We appreciate your presence with us. Um, here at Old South, we like to share the tagline of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We hope that you take that to heart and share that, uh, live into that out in, out in the world once you leave this place. We have a couple of bits of news for the morning. Um, there are announcements in the um, back of your bulletin. I'm going to highlight a couple of those. Um, for one, who knows what's happening this afternoon? Lenten Expressions. So Lenten Expressions, there's a, a detail there, but is a interactive uh, experience of art, um, ways that you can participate, listen, visualize, touch. Um, so make sure to come back and spend time with us this afternoon between one and four. Um, Jody is here. I'm May she is still standing, but Jody is here. So if you have questions, please feel free to talk to Jody and and uh, hold her up maybe for long enough so she makes it through the rest of the day. Um, but we appreciate all of her leadership and the way that um, many volunteers have made this happen over the last um, couple of weeks. It is an amazing, it's a series of amazing spaces that are off limits until one o'clock. So just because you're here now does not mean that you can sneak a peek. So come back at one. It's worth the wait. Trust me. The other one, it is an exciting week here at Old South. Not only, not only did we do a fantastic job doing some cleaning at Home and Mission House yesterday, cleaning and lifting and sorting and pizza e eating and something else, drinking and, and, and whatever else, but um, which was a great productive experience. And today it's a Lenten Expressions project. And anybody know what's happening on Tuesday night? John, John Bell. Bell. John Bell is a member of the Iona community in Scotland. Um, we are doing a, he is leading a workshop called Improving Congregational Song. It's more or less, I think, the same um, workshop that I did when I was in seminary, probably 2004 or five ish. Um, it's interactive, pensive, contemplative, lovely, prayerful, so don't miss that either. So just spend the week at the church. <laughs> just spend the week at the church. Can I we make almost a plug? always have the coffee on. Can I make a plug? Yeah. I also met John, uh, I had the privilege of meeting John at, at my seminary. There you go. Uh, even before yours. And uh, he much. is an absolutely wonderful person and, uh, and he's very talented and he's very good at bringing out the best in congregational singing. And so uh, I urge you, uh, if you don't have to be what you call a singer, he'll, he'll uh, teach us how to do that. It'll be a great evening. And if you get a chance to say anything to him, ask him about his experience when he was in Bangor eating squirrel. Okay. I okay. hosted him for dinner. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so the last thing, this is not in the bulletin, um, but you, there were envelopes as you came through. Today is, today we take one of the United Church of Christ's five for five offerings. Um, this is a, this is called the one great hour of sharing. A lot of times this is used for, um, um, relief after a crisis. There's somebody standing um, after a hurricane or a, um, a, an earthquake in the back of this picture. It also is something that is used after um, to help communities recover. So for instance, at some point, some of this money will also wind up going to Ukraine. It's used for other particular um, refugee and long-term care situations. So of countries, not people. Anyway, but um, 
But um, so that is what the today's one great hour sharing offering is. And please make sure to put that in the envelope if, um, if you're using that. So last week, um, we did this um, um, as, we, as we pass the peace of Christ, there are people joining us from, um, from Facebook and are streaming. So as we pass the peace of Christ, I invite you to turn around and wave at the camera so people can see um, your lovely faces and et cetera. So the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Stand up, greet one another, wave at each other, wave at the camera, dance if you want to. Would you join me in the call to worship in your bulletin? Happy are those who experience the grace of God. Find forgiveness and mercy from the Holy One. Happy are those who experience the steadfast love of God. Who find peace even in times of trial. Happy are those who experience rest in God. Who find Sabbath to renew their spirit. Let us pray. Holy God. Holy renewal, after times of broken relationships, painful injustices, and feeling deserted, we enter this season, season yearning for restoration and your comforting grace. In this time of wilderness and reflection, we evaluate the relationships between us and our neighbors. Fill our weary souls with hope. Lead us on roads of renewal and focus our minds as we ponder our callings in your realm. Amen.
I think we can actually do this today. We've got kids in the crowd. So I would like to invite the children to come forward. And boy, is it ever a good day for this. Zoe's a little less enthused. How's everybody this morning? Good. Listen to that energy. That's pretty amazing. <gasps> hey, check out their matching sweaters. Wow. So, today's Bible reading, or at least one of them, that Stan is going to read is maybe one that you've heard about before. Stan, do you think they've heard about this one before? I do. You do? Okay. Does the word prodigal ring any bells? No? no? All right, let's try this a different way. How many of you have a sibling? What, you don't have a sibling? Um, have you counted the people in your house? Oh, who's this guy? <laughs> if you didn't hear that, the comment was, I hope I'm not related to him. <clears throat> James, James, James. So, many of us have siblings, have a brother or a sister or a special friend that lives with us in our house, or both. So this story is about two brothers. Does this ring any bells? Yes? So, who wants to tell me, who can recite, can you tell me what goes on in the story? You want to give it a try? I bet, I bet you can't. Uh, so, are both brothers at home? No, both brothers are not at home. Did one move away? Yeah. Yeah. Did one take some stuff with them? I don't know. Buy stuff. Like, what do you put in your wallet? Money. Money. Okay. Did he take money with him? Yeah. He took money with him. Did he save it for a rainy day or, or uh, to invest or save it to give it back to his brother? No. No. What did he do? Did he spend it all? Hmm. He spent it all. But then what happens? And then what happens? How many of you have siblings? How many of the adults have siblings? How many of the adults, when you, when you read this passage or listen to this passage, go, oh, I know that feeling in one way or another, right? I'm an older sister, so we can examine it from that, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna go there. Um, so this guy, they, they, there's two brothers. And the younger brother takes all of his inheritance and he goes away and he spends it, spends it all. And then he comes back and, or he, he comes back and what happens? What would you expect to happen? If he spent all his money and he's gone away, you'd probably expect them to go, dude, you've already spent it. Seriously? But is that what happens? No. That's not what happens. So what happens is they throw a party for him. They go and make him a great meal. Um, they welcome him with open arms. Is that what you would have expected to happen? No. Jesus does this a lot to us, doesn't he? He's like, I'm going to make you think about this. So, 
No, 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 no. Jesus has told the story about the two brothers. Sorry. Thank you for helping me clear that up, James. So Jesus has told the story about these two brothers. So the thing that I want you to take with you is we can all be welcomed back. Is that a good enough lesson from that? We're probably going to go on into other things with the bigger kids, those bigger kids. But, um, but basically, that we all can be welcomed back. Kind of sounds like whoever you are, wherever you are in life's journey, you're welcome here, doesn't it? It's like it was planned that way. No? Oh. All right, how about we pray? Holy and beloved God, thank you for the ways that you work in us and through us for our siblings in Christ, for the ways that we have siblings in our community, for the ways that we care for all of our community. Amen. It's been a long time since I've had kids on those steps. Let us join together in a prayer of confession. Holy breath of life, there are moments when our decisions do not take into consideration the well-being of our neighbors. There are times when our reactions turn inward instead of building healthy reconciliation. How is it that we are holding back our neighbor's rebirth? How are our implicit and explicit biases restricting God's grace and radical love? How do our actions and biases impede our own spiritual growth? Urge us to be life-giving agents of your love. May each of our steps be healing, not only to us, but to our siblings on the journey. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God, our divine parent, run towards us with infinite love and grace. May the mercy we experience transform our minds, hearts, and souls. May we extend God's grace as we run towards our divine parent. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the 32nd Psalm. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then 
I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. And our gospel reading this morning is from the 15th chapter of Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come. And your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet... You have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, 
Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. May God's blessing be upon the reading and the hearing and the understanding of these words from our Holy Scriptures. Amen. So this morning, this prayer is as much for you as it is for me. Let us pray. Holy and beloved God, may the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts upon these scriptures, and our experiences be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It has been a little bit since we've done a expanded Lectio Divina uh, message, a, a study of the text, and today is a perfect day. So for those who don't know what Lectio Divina means, it basically we're going to look at the text a little bit. And you are going to help me look at the text a little bit. So this is one of those passages, right? It's one of those passages that is so ingrained in us, and even, even I would say in the general culture, that you ask kids on the steps and they know that story, right? You all know, the, do you know the story of the prodigal son? How many of you have siblings? I'll ask another question later. So, so, so you know this story. It's this story of two brothers who have inheritance because of the work that um, their parents have done and maybe their parents' parents have done. And the younger brother is given his inheritance, and he goes out, and the thought is, and who knows what he's going to do with it? And what does he do with it? Remind me, what does he do with it? He squanders it. What a great word, squander. We're not supposed to squander things, are we? So he takes this gift that has been given to him through his, through generations, through his, it is his legacy, and he squanders it. Probably on, it says, one of the things it says is prostitutes even. So he's probably out there squandering it on alcohol and gambling and prostitutes. He squanders it. Now, if you were that child's parent, would you be proud of him? No. My guess is that those of you who have children, and if your children have done things that you're not particularly proud of, that moment might seep into you, right? So when we sat on the steps with the kids, we basically said, the simplicity is, the message is, you will always be welcomed back. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you will always be welcomed back and loved and embraced and offered grace and forgiveness. Is that the end of the story, though? No. So a lot of the reasons that we interpret, interpret the text the way we do is its title. You know, we're, we're, we're offered the prodigal son in the message it's listed as the lost son 
It's all about that son coming home and being offered this great feast and grace and forgiveness. But there's other people in the story, aren't there? So who is an older sibling? How would you feel about that coming home? So an older sibling, tell me how you would feel about that. Jealous. Angry. It's one of those texts that Jesus prods us a little. I'm going to plant this story in you. I'm going to tell you this story of these two individuals, each given a legacy, each given gifts to start on their way or continue what the parents have started, and one of them squanders it. So the expectation in the crowds, of course, is for people to get angry and jealous because that's not the way you're supposed to do things. My guess is that older, some older siblings would say, but that's not right. I stayed here. I was responsible. I took care of things. And there you were with the prostitutes and the liquor and the gambling, and you come back here and you still are loved? What gives? So why do you think Jesus is telling us the story? That is for you. Answer me. Why do you think Jesus is telling us the story? Anybody? Forgiveness. Forgiveness? I think I heard somebody say teach them. There's, there's a couple of teachers over there. Show them what God is like. What was that? To learn compassion. That's not always easy, this compassion stuff, is it? No. <laughs> no, compassion is not always easy. Dealing with choices. The power of connection. And I would suspect that whether we are an oldest child, a youngest child, a middle child, an only child, that each of us finds something in this text that might even hit us in the gut if we really stop and absorb it. So Jesus offers us, we are offered this familiar parable, and perhaps because it is so familiar, we can misunderstand it, we can simplify it, we can twist it about a little bit. But what we are offered is a lesson in repentance, in forgiveness, in grace. We've mentioned this, I've mentioned this a little bit in the last couple of sermons, the grace and goodness that come in the community of Christ. It's all about relationships. 
not only with your own biological siblings, but your siblings in Christ. How we come together as community, has how we offer each other the grace and compassion and forgiveness in community. And it's like stretching our mental muscles a little bit. I'm going to give you this story to stretch it just a little bit so maybe you understand this a little deeper, how important community and relationship are to this thing that we do together. In this In this setting, Jesus is continuing to set up his community, to teach his disciples, to teach his followers. So all of this relationship stuff is crucial to what he is doing. And guess what? 2,000 years later, that relationship stuff, that community stuff, that how we teach our brother, how we, how we teach, how we care for our brothers and sisters in Christ is just as important as it is in this text. Yesterday afternoon, or yesterday we had a wonderful time doing some cleaning of the Holman Mission House next door. And I promised that I would bring coffee in the morning and pizza in the afternoon, and pizza arrived about noon. And a bunch of us sat around that great big dining room table in the the dining room in, in the Holman Mission House and had pizza. And we haven't been together for a while in spaces and in activities such as that. But it was a coming home moment, I think. It was a time of community regathering. There was some storytelling. There was some um, sharing. There was definitely some pizza. Not quite the fatted calf, but pretty good. Pretty good. So we are in a moment of regathering, all of us, of coming home, of being part of a community again. And in being part of a community again, there's a certain learning curve of how we are in community again, right? Because some of our social muscles are kind of out of practice. Mine are. This introvert has had two years of uh, great hermit time, so I'm, you know, I'm due for pushing those muscles a little bit. So as we continue to regather, as we continue to worship in this sanctuary in person together, as we fill our, start to fill our calendars with activities and programs here at the church, I bid you think about that grace and goodness and forgiveness and compassion and continue to ponder the same questions that I've asked over the last couple of weeks. How are we the church? Who are we as this church community? And how do we take this community that we foster and nurture and sometimes sweat over, how do we take this back out into the world? Thanks be to God. Amen. As we continue to be a community at prayer, I invite you to share your joys and concerns with one another. 
Um, I will, we don't have, Brent, would you like to pass the microphone? Let's do that. So Brent is gonna pass the microphone, having just been elected. Thank you, Deacon of the Day. Yes. So I would ask, and, and thank you, um, um, somebody brought this up at the meeting a couple of weeks ago that they can see from the camera, you can see backs of heads and masks, but you can't necessarily make out who is talking. So as you share your prayer, if you would say, I am so-and-so, I share your name and your prayer, and um, that way we can share that with anybody who is joining us from afar. So you were invited to share your joys and your concerns, your sorrows and your triumphs. Thank you. I uh, have to admit, I don't do a lot of uh, prayers of joys because I always feel like it's a brag list, but I can't help myself. I'm just so happy for my kids. Uh, Jody and I managed to pass through Boston on the way home, and Catherine has her first full-time job as a graphic designer doing exactly what she wanted to do. It's with the Sisters of St. Joseph, and part of the reason they hired her is from her experience here in the youth group. Uh, Zat Thad is absolutely enjoying medical school. He's working harder than he's ever worked, and he thinks it's worth every second of it. I'm very proud of him. And Zach just got an internship out in Silicon Valley, which he's going to be in this summer. So they're all doing what they want to do. And uh, I look around, and I see the younger families with little kids and just kind of chuckle because my kids were four, two, and two weeks old when we moved here and started here. And I'm just so grateful and so proud and so happy. So those are, these are my prayers. So while Brent, giving Brent a, a, a little time to walk, we have a birthday in the sanctuary today. In Pew 17, John, it is John's birthday today. And John, you have been through a lot this year. So we are so very, very glad you are with us, that you have a, a pew full of people to celebrate with you. This is my prayer. Oh, what I have to put up with. I know. Um, Lisa Laughlin, and speaking of birthdays and uh, spring, my mother, who is still very vital in driving, who just renewed her license for another 10 years, just turned 94, and I'm so blessed. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. She's pretty good at it, so don't worry. <laughs> Shirley Waddell, and I'm so thankful for the creativity and the energy that is in this congregation with what we're doing, uh, trying to get back together and for the thing we're going to have this afternoon uh, with celebrating Lent and celebrating the arts. Thank you. Amen. This is our prayer. Carol Condit. Continued prayers for our daughter, Andrea, her husband, Paul, and the now 13-year-old boy, they're still working on adoption. And prayers for their compassion, their hope, um, and their love. This is our prayer. So the, for, for those that might not have heard the name, Teresa Roberts, who was um, a member of this congregation and is now in, um, in Metro Atlanta, um, her brother has cancer and COVID and has been in the ICU for quite a while, so continued prayers for him. 
This is her prayer. Let us pray. Holy and beloved God, we come to you as your beloved children. Whether you've done what we've hoped or not, whether we are following all the rules or not. We thank you for the ways that you welcome us, embrace us, support us. We thank you for the ways that you offer us grace and goodness Holy God, each of us has parts of this story. We may be the parent, the sibling, the one who comes home, even the one who is serving the meals. We all have a place in this story. And likely, each one of us has played different parts at different times of our lives. Holy God, you call, we call that one prodigal. But you, holy God, call us beloved. As your beloved children, we raise up these prayers this morning. Prayers for family and friends wrestling with illness. For our own children, our own offspring out in the world or sitting beside us in the pews. God, we reach out our prayers to the many, many, many siblings of Christ across the planet who are in need of comfort and care and guidance and safety. We pray for peace and reconciliation. We pray for awareness of issues of justice and mercy. We pray for communities like our own, where we are called together as a family of faith to love one another, to care for one another, to fight for justice for one another. To bring the our faith into action outside of these walls. Holy and beloved God, may the work that we do, the prayers that we share, 
offer compassion and forgiveness and guidance and extravagant welcome. And Holy God, we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our time of offering, we, are, we offer our gifts back to the mission and ministry of this church. And as I look out and see us regathering and coming back into community, I think it really is time to start passing plates again, but we will think we're going to do it next week. And if anybody would like to volunteer to help, come see me. Okay, hear these words of invitation. Even when our gifts become dormant, God, our divine parent, stirs our hearts, calling us to bring to life our gifts once again. What gifts may God be challenging us to revive? How can those treasures, talents, and time create equitable communities? So in this time, as Patricia plays her offertory, I bid you pray of the sustainability and mission of this church and invite you to put offering in the yellow box at the back of the room on your way out. The morning offering will now be given and received. You would join me in the prayer of dedication. Loving God, holy fountain of blessings, with gratitude we celebrate the offerings we share with you in this community today. May they enliven our spirits, building excitement around us, and create a culture of giving. Open us to new possibilities for using our gifts to build the dignity of all, and to strengthen our neighborhoods. Amen.
Our service of worship may have ended, but our service to mission and ministry continue. So as you go out, I bid you to live into that promise of compassion and forgiveness and grace and goodness. And hear these words of benediction. May our spirits come alive in this season of Lent when we run to God, our divine parent, with the hopes of strengthening our bonds, when we embrace the Christ, our divine neighbor, with the hopes of reconciliation, when we breathe with the Spirit, our divine encourager, in the hopes of peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.